Hey, welcome to another exciting episode of In the Shoot. I'm Brandon, he's Kalen, and he usually tries to stump the chump. So Kalen, what do you got today? <laughs> All right. Today, we're going to talk, believe it or not, one of the things that we, we come from a conservative family, a conservative business, something that we we look super right, super righteous, um, super uh, just just conservative in general. So my question is, the impact of marijuana on the rest of agriculture. Um, Montana recently became one of those states that we, we, we legalized the recreational use, not, not just medicinal, but recreational use of marijuana in the United States. Um, and I'll throw out some stats and then I'll, I'll hand it over to dad, but 18 states, three territories. Um, one of those territories being the, District of Columbia, which is not really a territory. It's, it's a weird thing. Anywho, um, 18 states, three territories, recreational use for marijuana. 36 states, four territories, again, one of those being District of Columbia, being medicinal use. So we've gone from 23 total, or excuse me, 21 total states utilizing it, states or, states or uh, territories as recreational and let me look at here, 40 total states or territories as medicinal, uh, between two and a half and five million pounds, two and a half million or five million pounds of cannabis or marijuana or weed or grass, whatever you want to classify it as, is produced legally, specifically legally every single year. It uses between, actually roughly, two and a half times more water than most other crops in agriculture today. That's malt, that's barley, that's corn, that's wheat, that's stuff that we use in, in liquor, uh, foods, all sorts of other things. Um, and, it, and it honestly, it pulls a lot of heavy metal nutrients from the ground, which has become more of a, a consistent comparison to tobacco because tobacco oftentimes will take the ground nutrients suck it up, use it to produce tobacco. And then after, I, I couldn't tell you, but there's, there is a small age range that tobacco is able to produce on a specific plot of ground. And then they have to rotate. Otherwise that ground is just depleted Please. and it can't produce yeah. uh, the tobacco. So using all that statistics, 18 states, three territories for recreational use, 36 states, four territories for medicinal use. Between two and a half to five million pounds of cannabis produced legally every single year, and it uses two and a half, or excuse me, two, just two, two times more amounts of water per crop in agriculture than it does today. And on top of that, pulls continuous uh, metal nutrients. You know, I'm talking iron, uh, copper, anything that might be in in the in the ground itself naturally it pulls that from the from the ground much like tobacco wood and you have to start rotating it so i'm going to ask again as 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 a uh a proposed or posed question to my father what do you think is the impact of marijuana on the rest of agriculture beef lamb pork uh wheat dairy uh, barley anything you can think of what do you think the impact of marijuana is on the rest of agriculture ex uh explicitly stated in the United States, not anywhere else, but in the United States. Well, from what I hear, <clears throat> the, the corn chip and potato chip industry should should boom then, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I suppose uh, with those munchies, right? Like, yeah, there you go. That's the I hear, popcorn I hear. and the potato chips. Yeah, yeah. That yeah is that it? Okay, now, now one thing you said, I just wanted to clarify because I don't know much, I don't virtually nothing about, you know, growing marijuana. Um, you said heavy metals like mercury? It just said, so from the i hope everybody understands at this point i do very minimal research at this point i have another job i have an army job um so on the side i research i prep i put notes together but all the stuff i found to this point and i'll put the link below the other stuff i put was it pulls heavy metal nutrients from the ground i don't 
<laughs> because no, iron, here, hold on, hold on a second. This, 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 this hurts by the rest of my family. Everybody else has a science degree. I have <laughs> an arts degree. You're a, I don't you're know 11. what a metal and a heavy metal is. So dad would have to explain the this heavy metal. might be yes, a time to tell you heavy. that you're adopted. <laughs> yeah. I... <laughs> I'm adopted. Sorry. <laughs> um, you're, you know, you're talking things like, like mercury. I mean, these are, these are toxins, heavy metals. When you're talking iron and that kind of stuff, I mean, every plant has to have those. Those right. are minimums, you know. Yeah. You got to have carbon, you know, hydrogen, oxygen, you know, um, iron's a big one. Yeah. I mean, those are all nitrogen. They all are essential to plant growth. So my question would be is if you pull, if you're pulling heavy metals, and I think maybe you just misspoke or somebody didn't write that right, or, no, or maybe I, it is I'm, true. I'm looking at my notes. It says, it says pulls heavy, metal. heavy metals, nutrients. Okay from the ground okay. so because the heavy whatever, metal whatever the, the heavy metal nutrients yeah are. usually you think of mercury things like that as a heavy and, metal and that makes sense i mean that's and how if, they that's how they uh they were able to track the lewis and clark expedition right was mercury right. uh right. A, in the in latrines yeah that it, it's the, essentially it's where they peed they like they had mercury pooped. in their system or pooped yeah and and that's where they they urinated or defecated and that's where they found mercury and they're like oh this is where a campsite was so, right this yeah. is exactly where the latrine was for their campsite yeah that mercury mercury has been a use since the egyptians used mercury for a number of things for medicinal purposes whether it was right or not uh right. you know same thing even the lewis and clark the early 1800s the same way i mean, I mean they, they were still mercury bleeding people something. back then when oh yeah you realize right. now that bleeding is not a good option but yeah. right so um to answer that, th that that question is you're talking about legal use whether it's recreational or medicinal and how much right. that impacts agriculture well my so i i throw in recreational and i throw in medicinal uh, use. and, and i'll, I'll throw legal. in there rec recreational being i don't care i just want to get a high no, i, I want to feel good that's 21 right. states medicinal being you know i have cataracts there's or i have cancer and to, right. to dull the pain or to deal with what i'm dealing with that's 40 states or territories right. uh, so again 21 states or territories recreational 40 medicinal being 40 being states or territories medicinal um that that's where the rub is what do you think the, the impact of marijuana specifically is on the rest of agriculture? Will it impact in a negative, positive, or just a neutral way when it comes to cattle markets, crop markets, uh, anything else you can think? Of? Yeah, I, I don't know that it's going to make that big of an, an impact. Uh, and, and there's two things there. One of them is now you're tracking the legal use. Right. Nobody was tracking the illegal use and what the impact was before that. Right. A good point. right so yeah. that hasn't probably hasn't changed a lot right. i can't imagine because those that were inclined to smoke it uh were doing it anyway now they just got a, a, a more open way to do it or the ability to do it without any fear of you know having a kind of a felony on them. right so so there's that and and who knows what that really was because people weren't they weren't tracking it right agriculture i think the biggest thing biggest impact for for ag would be the hemp market Hemp's a, a legitimate viable use of fiber for, right. you know, clothing, particularly clothing, linens, whatever. But um, I don't know that it's going to make that big of a difference. It may do something regionally in an area where it grows very well and a lot of acreage can be used to do that. But that's certainly, I don't think, I think our growing season's probably a little too short here you to know, make much of an impact in this well, area. I don't know though. In, in Montana, but... Yeah. I think it's that's a that's an important aspect because hemp was a big agricultural commodity oh, yeah. for a long time. You know, Thomas Jefferson, uh, George Washington, some of those big, you know, the first presidents and and their plantations created hemp. So the fact that hemp has suddenly become something that is ostracized because it has a drug source inference to it, it, it to me that's that's crazy because we've talked about that before is you know hemp versus sisal or or uh a a regular a polymer type source in terms of 
packing animals because we like to pack animals in the back country you know you can't really break a polymer pig and string as well as you can maybe a hemp peg and string because that natural fiber allows it to break a little bit better than the artificial fiber so that, that yeah. that's that's kind of where i come from too is it's not only just market but it's also it's usefulness as well right <laughs> Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, the tensile strength on a on a polymer rope, regardless of the size, if you take the right. same size, uh, that compared to a natural fiber, natural fiber is generally not near as strong. So, no. uh, uh, you know, and, and it's a it's an oil based type product, big deal. But I I don't know that there is going to be that big of a a market. I think these things all of a sudden they will jump up and you'll have maybe see a lot of use. And then it goes back down and, and the new wears off and it plateaus and it probably goes to levels that were established long before they started keeping track of it. Like I said earlier, you know, that doesn't, doesn't mean it didn't happen. Didn't mean it didn't impact um, because a lot of these growers are doing very specialized from what I see on the news and watch some of these dispensaries here locally, they're trying to grow. I mean, they'll show up, picture of a wall and i mean they've got names of all of these different things so you don't take 10 acres for instance and plant a particular type unless it's strictly for the hemp portion of it but as far as a a, a drug use as a um I, it's not a it's not a psychedelic i mean it's it's just a calming i i guess right for um, the most part yeah yeah so i think i think that to do that in a, in a very large scale in ag is probably not very viable because they're specializing in all these different types. And unless it's the same stuff, they're just calling it different names. I don't know. I, right. I imagine there's, there's different potencies to it um, depending on, on what you're looking for. Now, I, and I'll tell you, I'm not against it. I mean, I'm, I don't use it, but I, I can remember being about uh, uh, 16, 17 years old. And my great aunt BC was dying of cancer. And, right. you know, I mean, in those days, you know, the, this late seventies, early eighties, and that was the, I mean, the, in, that was the in, war on drugs instead yeah, of the war on terrorism. It was the war on drugs. Yeah. Right. And, and, and it really Nixon. wasn't right. And it was like, Hey, you just didn't, you didn't partake in that. You didn't have anything to do with it. And my, my great uncle, you know, tried to find some, some marijuana for her to smoke, to try right. to ease the pain because nothing was touching her, her pain that she had going, you know, dying of cancer. And I can remember her laying on a, in a bed or basically her deathbed and in, being in so much pain and she'd take a, a couple of puffs and that was it. And, and instantly you could tell it made a difference on her pain level that it was like, you know, that changed my mind in that it's not all bad. There are some very good uses for that. And if it, if it took that woman and her, just the sweetest woman in the world, I mean, God, I just love my Aunt BC if it took her pain away so that she could die easily or better, I'm all for it. You yeah. know, what's the problem? Um, and I, and I don't think there's a lot of people that probably argue much against that, but the abuse of it, I mean, there's all kinds of other things, what, what's being laced with into it. I mean, you, you know, there's all kinds of different things you can talk about, but as far as an ag, I don't see that it's going to make much of a difference. Just, just another commodity then. Yeah. Yeah. And that commodity may not, may not be, uh, you know, in the scale, I think it, not for the, not for that use, but the hemp use. And, and right. there's been some people growing hemp in this country, this part of the, the, the U S and, um, I don't know that the market's entirely there, you know, and, and again, I think it may be taking a little bump here and there too. So, uh, we'll see. I don't know. Good no, question I, though. I, I agree. I think it, it'd be great to see a long-term use, but for sure, I think for now, it should be treated as just another commodity. Um, I mean, coming from personal experience, you've shared that story, that same story with me multiple times. I have no issue with marijuana. Um, the impact it has on other markets of ag, I think it's just another sector. You know, it's, right. it's treated as uh, as wheat, as barley. Right. Okay, let's treat it as marijuana slash hemp, whatever it is. But yeah, with that, I think uh, it's great, great opportunity to, in fact, expand ag, but um, I, I don't really don't personally. I don't see it as uh, 
minimizing impacts, I think it should actually, believe it or not, maximize. So I hope it does. But um, yeah, with that, we will see and <laughs> we will put this conversation out the pasture.